Howdy hackers and welcome to another episode of Fairlight TV. Anybody interested in the uh, Chicken Lip brand, so the Commodore brand, are likely to have followed the, uh, the development in this area recently, where a team led by fellow YouTuber Perifractic, they have managed to purchase the brands, all brands related to Commodore, uh, bought from the Dutch company that was selling it, and now the, it's, it's a brand handled by um, Perifractic and the team around him. And they are starting to sell a Commodore branded computer that is a C64. A few variants of it. Is that one something that you should consider, or is it a bogus or a scam? Have a look at that, because I'm looking through the different options of uh, consuming uh, C64 related software, what kind of hardware you need to do it, and the options you have. Over to that. All right, so selling a new C64 labeled Commodore, are they worth it or are they trying to scam us due to our retro needs? If you want to use a Commodore 64 for all the kinds of software that comes for the Commodore 64, you have a number of options. Let's run through a few of the key ones here. First of all, you can use the original hardware. Uh, I've uh, shown you here a classical brown bread bin. And the key merit of that one is that it's 100% compatible. But there are a number of obstacles that you need to kind of uh, pass before you can use that one properly. First of all, there is this bulky and risky power supply unit. If they break, they tend to take the computer with them. And if so, your, uh, your machine is toast and that needs to be repaired and repairing the old ones could be a costly exercise. Uh, the output from them, that's an analog thing, uh, which is not something you can kind of connect to all and any monitors available on the market. You can buy an old monitor by all means, a CRT, and, and then everything looks absolutely amazing. But they are rather bulky, and if you have sort of space constraints uh, where you're having your computer, then a CRT might not be the one that you want, and then you need to find an option, possibly an interface that converts it to HDMI so you can connect the HDMI uh, to, uh, to like a modern TV or a modern monitor. Again, that will cost you a, a bit of money to manage that. And then you also need a disk drive because if you want uh, like the original setup, then of course you need something that stores the media so you can load it and then you need a disk drive. There are a few things that you can sort of make to mitigate a few of the shortcomings. Well, I didn't mention that it's 100% compatible, but there are two variants of the SID chip, and of course you can only have one SID in the original machine. There are SID switches, so you can switch between them, and uh, music that is done for one of the SIDs could then be sort of properly played because you switch over to the relevant SID for that. But the key sort of feature that you basically need to have is a, is a relevant utility cartridge and also then one that can emulate the disk drive so you can kind of live without a, a disk drive and you can use like a USB stick or, or one of those micro SD cards something that could be handled by, by a unit. And then uh, a 1545, 1541 Ultimate is sort of the, the ruling option here. It emulates, first of all, it's a utility card, of course, but it also emulates a disk drive and it can also emulate a RAM expansion unit. So if you want to play one of those games that need 
the RAM expansion unit or is highly improved by a RAM expansion unit, then that one is supporting that. Also, uh, the 1541 Ultimate has a, a, a LAN port, so uh, you can use that for network. And then you can use something like Assembly 64 as sort of your, your, your master where you store your software. And then you just click that, and then that could be transmitted to the Ultimate and started there, which is a super convenient way of, of kind of consuming C64 games or other software. Uh, you could also buy a Turbo Chameleon. Um, they are now available in version two. I, ha I, I do have the old one. That one has the advantage of also uh, emulating um, video using VGA. So you get a better signal from it. On the, on the flip side of that is that it takes over the entire machine. So um, you, know, you are no longer 100% compatible, compatible because Turbo Chameleon is running its own core and it's emulating basically the machine. So even if you're running it on native hardware, you are basically running an, an FPGA-based emulator. That was the original, the pros and cons of an original machine. A number of years ago, there was a Kickstarter for uh, a new machine, a C64 re-implementation. Uh, sorry, it wasn't Kickstarter, it was actually Indiegogo. Uh, well, anyways, um, suddenly they realized that, no, they're not going to be able to fulfill the requirements. So they sent out this mini one um, to everybody who participated in or backed the campaign. But eventually we actually got one of those big ones. So uh, super great work from, from the guys doing this. But this one is, mm, if you want native, this is not really it. It's convenient, not really native. It has access to, it, it is basically a, a Raspberry Pi that runs uh, an old instance of the Vice emulator. And then it has uh, like a graphical user interface where you could conveniently and simply using the joystick start games without doing any load star, comma uh, eight or any of the other things that you need to do on the normal C64 to launch games. And um, a number of people are are fans of this. Um, predominantly, the gamers who would like to have the computer next to like the big family machine, like they would place a, a console, a PlayStation, or or a Nintendo Wii, or or whatever sort of of console they're running. This is more a console approach to computing. If if you are into like programming or, or tinkering with the machine. This is not really for you. This is an emulator implemented in hardware. It's, it's good, it's convenient, it has a modern power supply unit, um, it emulates the disk drive so you, you don't need to have any separate disk drive. It's fully contained, you only need this one and you're done and it, you can connect the modern monitor no problem. But uh, this is still not my favorite. I have to admit it. I, I understand that this is the perfect opportunity and the perfect solution for a number of people, but I'm not one of them. Okay, so this new Commodore machine, what is it? Well, first of all, it's basically an Ultimate 64. We did reference the Ultimate 1541, which is an external cartridge. The Ultimate 64, is a re-implementation of the machine, but where most of the circuits are condensed into an FPGA. Isn't that the same as the, um, um, the, the 64? Mm, yeah, no, not really, no, not really. An FPGA is, is different. So this is sort of a re-implementation of the actual machine. It's not emulating the original machine. So you have a slick power supply unit. It's a little small one, uh, very safe. It has full HDMI out. It, it works absolutely flawlessly. There are two slots where you can put uh, normal SIDs. 
so you can have one of the 6581 and you can also have an 8580 if you have those chips available but it can also emulate uh, the SID. So you don't need uh, a physical SID and you would still get reasonably good uh, SID emulation. And you have the opportunity of stuffing in USB devices. First of all, of course, uh, normal thumb drives. Um, I'll have one of those here actually, I think. Ultimate. Uh, but, not only that, if you want to connect like a PC keyboard, you can do that as well. So uh, you can have an external USB uh, keyboard, um, I mean, ba basically anyone. And this one also has a built-in LAN port directly into the machine. So it uses the U user port for that to have the USB ports externally without having to fiddle with the original case. And, and so and the LAN goes in there and it has all the opportunity of using Assembly64 for launching programs into it via your normal PC over the, the LAN connection. It is not 100% compatible, but unless you are a demo coder trying to push those last little hidden details out of the hardware, there is basically no risk that you will be one running into the the small flaws there might still be there and and you're taking a commercial risk buying this because it's a new company and and of course they're not really profitable yet they have paid off the the, the money they they needed to pay to to commodore in holland to get the rights for using the names and and all of that so all that is taken care of but of course there is a theoretical risk that you would send in your money now and they go belly up and all the money would be lost I think the risk is super small, so I would like you I would like to ensure that you don't overestimate this risk. But again, there is a risk, absolutely. And I have no involvement in the company and I'm not ready to take any blame in case you are paying for this and the company goes belly up. Don't blame me. I'm just saying there is a risk, but the probability of it happening is very, very little. So I think it's a safe bet, but don't blame me if thou proved to be wrong. Okay, I said this was based on Gideon's Ultimate 64, um, but you can buy them yourself. Uh, it's not available yet. The, the, the Ultimate 64 2 Elite, uh, which is the one I have in the picture here, that one is available, of, available from September. But if you look at the price for that one, and if you look at the price for sort of the cheapest option of the Commodore machine, they are basically the same. But if you would like to build a machine based on this motherboard, you would also need a case. Of course, if you have one, then you can use that one. But otherwise, you would need a new, uh, buy a new case. Like individual computers, they are selling a C64 case, which looks absolutely fine. But that would, that would also cost you money. And then you would need a keyboard. There is this Bling Board 64, which is a new thing, soon to be released. Uh, great thing, I guess. Uh, but that's also an additional uh, cost for that. And if you sum up, sum up these three, it's a lot more expensive to buy those three separately rather than buying even the most expensive variant that uh, Commodore is selling now. So from, from the perspective of what is the cost for me? Is this a, a, a good package? I would still say that the Commodore machine that is put out now looks really promising. And if you compare it to the other option, I would say they are actually good value for money. You get a really competent, really compat compatible machine that has the feature of HDMI out so you don't have to fiddle with data. You can, you can emulate the disk drive properly using thumb drives. So no external disk drive that can go out of alignment and have dirty heads and stuff. It is a disk drive that just works and, co and the compatibility on that one is also absolutely perfect. 
and you can connect your normal joysticks and, and you don't need to play if you're playing emulator proper emulator on a pc you need to do uh, weird things playing using the keyboard normally but this one has all the power the proper outlet so you can connect your normal atari style joystick and that one will work perfect so if you ask me do i recommend the new commodore c64s the question, the answer to that is actually, yes, I would. I think they look like they are providing really good value for money. You get a machine newly produced with the benefits of a newly produced machine, but it has almost all of the aspect of the original thing. I just realized that there is something else that I need to show you here, and it is this. So Retrofusion is a company selling uh, cases, and they're also selling this mech board 64. So a total replacement for the keyboard. Um, yeah, that. Um, yeah, that was the key thing that I would like to show you. Um, they're also selling grease weasels. So if you would like to port your existing C64, then the grease weasel would be one of the options where you could read the disks using uh, like a PC drive. And then, um, then you would get a really, really big and low level file. And then you can convert that to like a, a nib file or a G64. So it's the, it's the same company selling all of those things. And you can also buy one of those C64 to HDMI. So if you're going for the native solution, then here you would have that as an option as well. But uh, again, if you're interested in Commodore 64 and you would like to build your own using Gideon's uh, Elite, um, no, six, Ultimate 64 Elite 2, then here you would have a, uh, a case and a keyboard that will go. And then you would have a totally new produced C64 using stuff that was designed and produced very recently. So that was everything we had for today. I hope you enjoyed my summary here. Uh, if you disagree with my conclusions, I would like to know it by you respectfully commenting down below. And if you would like to do something else now, watching something else, could I suggest that you go and look for the perifractic interview I did a number of years ago now. One of the actually kind of early episodes of Fairlight TV. Until we meet again, see you. Bye bye. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. Fairlight.